हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यू आर डूइंग गुड इन दिस वी कॉन सी प्रॉब्लम लार्जेस्ट पॉजिटिव इंटीजर दैट एग्जिस्ट विद इट्स नेगेटिव वी कॉन सी फाइव वेज टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम द प्रॉब्लम इज वेरी सिंपल इट सिंपली सेज दैट वी आर गिवन एन एरे नम्स दैट डज नॉट कंटेन एनी जीरोस दैट इज स्पेसिफिक यू विल नो व्हाई दे आर सेइंग दिस फैक्ट बिकॉज यू हैव टू फाइंड द लार्जेस्ट पॉजिटिव इंटीजर के such that negative of k also exist in the array now if you come on back to why zero is not existing here is because if you have one zero then negative zero is also a zero so if you even have just one element zero then still this condition would have been true but they are saying that zero will not be there so if you find a positive element k then you will have to go and find its corresponding negative element and if you have these pair then please go and find the largest one so as we saw okay let's imagine that we have this example so firstly we saw that we have to find a k and a negative k pair now if that pair we have got we'll just try to maximize our answer so i will go on to my first element and i will try to find its pair which means i go on to all the other elements and i will see do i have a negative of this number which means negative of 8 do i have it if yes then i will say okay my answer in the very beginning was a minus 1 which means not possible then i will just try to maximize with the maximum value okay 8 now i will go on to my next element minus 10 then i will go and try to find its negative right okay do i have a plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 oh sorry i don't have a plus 10 okay no worries then minus 4 then go and try to find its positive like its negative which is plus 4 Plus four, plus four. Yeah, I have plus four. So maximize your answer. Oh, my answer is already high. So don't maximize it, and so on and so forth. So you saw that you are trying to find a pair. If found, you are trying to maximize your answer. So time will be of n square, and for sure, by of n square because we are trying to find the pair, and space will be o of one. Now, if I ask you, can you please optimize it? Then the first question for you will be okay from. O of n square can we somehow bring to O of n log n? Maybe again, I'm not directly jumping to O of n because very easily we can see that O of n solution is also there. But still, we know that we have to fake optimizing stuff, and it also helps in thinking of all the possibilities. So we know, okay, if we try for O of n log n, n log n log n factor as soon as comes in, we know that maybe we can apply binary search or sorting. Then we know, that, okay, maybe if we sort stuff, okay, let's imagine if things are sorted, then what? Then what? Like if things are sorted, then what will I apply? I would simply easily say, okay, if things are sorted, I can simply compare the extreme ends because this will be again. If things are sorted, if this is a negative ten, then there is a possibility that in the extreme end I will be having a plus ten. But Aryan, what if I have a plus twelve? Okay, if you have a plus twelve, then simply you would expect that you would have a minus twelve on the next side on the extreme end. So you see that if a number is negative and a positive, they will be on the extreme ends. So if extreme end came in picture, I know that I can apply my two pointers here because I can just iterate from the extreme ends itself. So we realize, okay, maybe we can apply our two pointer technique after sorting. So we will get the input. We will simply sort the input, and then maybe we can try applying two pointers. How? Okay, let's say I have a pointer i and I have a pointer j. Now I will compare if one of them, which means you know that nums of i will always contain a negative element, and nums of j will always contain a positive element because it is sorted in the increasing order. So I will check if negative of nums of i, if it is equal to my nums of j, is if, if Negative of nums of i if it is equals to my nums of j, which means I have found a correct pair. As you can see, let's imagine that if my i would have been here and if my j would have been here, then I would have easily said, "Na, that negative of nums of i is equal to nums of j." So I have found a correct pair. But as you can see, in the very beginning, my i and j will be here. I and j will be here. But negative of nums of i is not equal to nums of j. Then what should I move? So else. Or maybe else if depending upon because you know that n two point technique you only move one point if the condition is not satisfied. If the condition is satisfied, you move both the pointers. As in, okay, if this is satisfied, I will firstly update my answer, which is simply saying nums of j, and I should ideally move 
both the pointers which means i plus plus and j minus minus although i will tell you later on that this portion is not even required i can simply return my nums of j here from here itself i will tell you but before that what if these are not satisfied if these are not satisfied then i have to move one of the pointers and i can easily see if this is not satisfied then if i convert this again make sure you know that on the extreme left you have a number which is negative so if you do a negative it will become a positive so if i convert this to a positive number which is 10 i convert this to a negative uh, again it will still remain positive which is 9 so you know that if this is a 10 if this is a 10 you realized i have a 9 here i have a 10 here which means if this is a 10 i if it did not match which means i did not encounter a 10 here so ideally it makes sense that I should move my I pointer. But R in Y I pointer. Because okay. It makes sense that you did not encounter. It makes sense that you did not encounter minus 10. It is the reason that you are saying us. To move your I pointer. But I am saying it. To move I pointer and not J pointer. Because J still has the capability. What if this minus 8 would have been minus 9. Then if you would have moved your smaller value. If your i would have moved here then you would have made a pair thus it is very highly important what is very highly important? but yeah it is highly important that if i will check okay else if my absolute value of nums of i if it is greater than my nums of j then i should for sure move my i pointer because a bigger value I could not find its counter. I, I, I could not find its counter. So it is good to actually move from there itself. And for sure else, which means absolute value of nums of j, which means nums of j is more than absolute value of nums of i, then for sure move your j pointer. Now coming on back, I was referring that I don't need to move my i and j pointers if the value is same. Why is that the case? Because if you remember, I want the maximum value. If I have already got some pair some pair then no matter what if i even shrink then the values are always gonna reduce so it is much better that if you get your matching first matching whichever you get simply return the answer from there itself and thus the code is exactly same that i will simply initialize my i to zero and j to n minus one and then simply keep on moving if it is same simply return my nums of j else if, if absolute value again you can take the absolute value also or you can use the one negative also because you remembered that nums of i i is always pointing to a negative already so negative of negative will make it a positive or you can also keep as absolute that will also work i plus plus right and then else j plus plus so that is how I can simply, simply solve it. Now code, as you can see, exactly the same, just that I have to sort it in the very beginning. Now, because of this sorting, although we use two pointers, but because of sorting, the time will be O of n log n. And for sure, as you know, that by default, the sorting takes O of log n space and O of n time in, sorry, O of n space in Python. Now, if you want to simply optimize it, as in from O of n log n to better time, which means o of n maybe then you will simply realize what i was trying to do if i had a negative eight i was trying to search for a positive eight if i had a positive eight i, I was just trying to search for a negative eight so basically i am just trying to check the existence of their corresponding negative sign if it is negative find positive if it is positive find negative which means if i have a negative do a negative of this number it becomes eight if i have eight do a negative of this number it becomes minus eight so I'm trying to find the existence of some negative sign. Whenever you get across this word, you have to find the existence of something exists or not. Then for sure, we can use a hash map or a hash set. I would not use a hash map because hash map is more useful when we have to get the frequency of something, occurrences, count of something. But hash set is just the occurrence and the existence of that specific thing. So I know that if I have this input again, I know that I if I can simply uh, bifurcate numbers to negative and positive and I can say okay let's put all the negative numbers in my hash set I will put all the negative numbers which means minus 4 minus 10 uh, and minus 8 in my hash set then I will iterate on all the positive numbers in my 
actual lumps vector and see do i have a corresponding element in my hash set because i know in the hash set only negative numbers are stored in my nums i am only iterating on the positive numbers so i will can simply go and counter check do i have a negative number in my hash set and that checking is a over fun time operation so i will simply check if present i will maximize my answer so i will say answer again if this element exists in my hash set only then i will maximize my answer saying answer maximum answer equals to maximum of answer comma that specific value which is this nums of i let's see the code it's pretty simple firstly i iterated on all the elements and pushed all those negative elements in the hash set then i went on another time if my element is more than equal to zero and it is contained if and the negative of that element is contained inside my negative hash set then i will maximize my answer simply saying okay you can also play this as answer is equals to maximum of answer comma that absolute value of el or maybe because el is also always positive so you can also place as el just el you can remove this condition altogether that's also completely fine so with this you saw that time use will be o of n plus o of n but space also will be used as o of n because of the hash set space which we are using but you might think rn isn't it unnecessary that you are firstly putting in all the elements and then you are going on and checking if the negative counterpart is present or not like isn't it a simple thing that i know i have an array i can simply iterate on the array i can simply keep on pushing the elements in the array if i am at a negative weight i will simply go and check do i have a negative counterpart in my existing hash set or not isn't it easy like why to keep two iterations for the same thing yeah that's the reason like we will convert this entire stuff to a one one hash set how i will do it simply i as you can see i simply did on all the elements of the vector i will check do i have a negative counterpart as i told you for a positive element 8 negative counterpart is minus 8 for a negative element 8 the negative counterpart is 8 so i will simply go and check do i already have a negative counterpart in my array or not or my hash set or not if i have then i will again i know that this negative counterpart can be either positive or negative so i will take the absolute of this because i want to take the positive right so i'll maximize my answer and then if not simply push in that specific element in my hash set and thus i would not be needing to have two pass i can simply get my work done in just one pass so time used will be o of n but space for sure as it is hash set space used will be o of n now if i ask you can you optimize it a bit more you will see iron for sure i need to know the existence of a specific element so i would need a hash set i also have to return all the elements so i would need for sure o of n time so there is no way iron i can optimize my time and space i will say you are correct you have to return all the elements so you would need a time of o of n and you also have to know the existence of the negative counterpart which is what we are doing here so you also need to have o of n space but if i go a bit a bit level deeper as in if you see here you are storing integers you are storing integers and we know to check the existence of some specific thing as in we have usually seen in the fenwick trees or maybe in some other data structures to check the existence we can also keep track of visited array we have seen that trend right like trees graphs we have seen this that we keep track of the visited array what this visited array means this visited array simply means okay i will keep track of one zero one two three four and five if i want to say if the element 4 if the integer 4 is visited or not i will simply go at the index 4 of this visited array and mark this as visited so um, but rn similarly okay you are using an integer but here you will see i can use a boolean so i realized ah i can use because i just want to know the existence existence as in visited or not visited so for existence which means present or not present I can use an array vector also as an array vector, but you will see that array will store integers. Okay, this integer is or not, this or not, which is simply my what my hash set is doing. But I know I just want true or false. So I can use a Boolean array or maybe a bit set also. 
you will see the speciality about them is that one block just take one bit and that is speciality if you have n blocks it will take n bits while if you had an integer and you had n blocks it would have taken again one block takes n bytes depending upon if you if you are using a 64 bit system or 32 bit system for 64 bits it's n eight bytes for one block of integer so you will see again this size depends upon what is the operating system right now everyone is using 64 bit operating system so we will have n into eight bytes so you see how much difference is in actual size again time complexity or size space complexity wise both are still o of n space but 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 you will see that this space is much more less than this space now coming on back how we'll use it we simply know that we have to make a visited kind of an array but we know that this visited array starts again we have to focus on the indexes indexes starts from a zero value but we can simply see that our number are negative to positive so how will i store a negative again if i ask you you have to bro store a negative two now negative two if i go on in the index there is no negative two in the indexes right so i can easily store a positive value here but not a negative value i cannot store that that's not possible for me technically right yeah it is true how to do that simply we can use index shifting this is a technique in which okay you have the numbers from negative 1000 to positive 1000 you can just have to bring the minimum value you have to bring the minimum value to zero what should what should you add to bring your minimum value to zero simply add a plus thousand both sides now your value range shifted from negative 1000 to 1000 to zero to 2000 and thus now you can use this range for your actual elements which are indirectly from negative 1000 to 1000 and how will you use this range by simply every time you add or encounter an element do a plus thousand and then check or maybe then insert how again we use the exact same this is the exact same code now instead of this unordered set or a hash set i will simply use this vector boolean vector which i will make so i'll make a boolean vector i know the size at max can be 2001 right because of the integer range which they have given right now i will simply iterate on this element again i have to check the visited of this negative element negative element but i know that i have to add a thousand before checking before even checking or putting add a thousand so i will simply add a thousand and simply again exact same code exact same code exact same code as that of hash set and now you have to insert that element in your hash set again insert it but add its this 1000 value before inserting so this is the only change which i did that before checking i added a thousand and before inserting i added a thousand that's it else exact same code as on the right side now space time time will for sure still be o of n because i have to iterate on all the elements no matter what space is also technically o of n itself or I should say more precise, O of 2000, but that is on the bit level. So it will be O of 2000 bits. Again, in this, you can also use a bit set and say bit set of size 2001. And then let's name it as a visitor. You can also use this. That will perform the exact same way. And that's how in these five ways you can simply solve it. If you like the video, please do let us know down below by smashing the like button also and by commenting also if you want something was missing something i need to improve please do also comment below so that we can improve and bring out better videos for you bye bye take care bye